secret layer alert! No secret layer alert! No secret layer alert! No secret layer alert! Did you enjoy that? Good, because this secret layer super drop is so bad that that is the only fun thing that is going to happen in this video. Let's ring it again and then stare into the abyss together. No secret layer alert! No secret layer alert! No secret layer alert! No secret layer alert! Now maybe, as you will see, and then offer your own commentary upon, this is just a bad super drop. An unfortunate blip in what will be an otherwise successful year of cool and worthwhile secret layers. And I hope very much that is the case. But honestly, I don't know if I've seen secret layers this bad since Secret Layer Lord of the Rings, which was the Magic the Gathering product equivalent of Leonard Nimoy singing about Bilbo Baggins. Bilbo Baggins. Bilbo Baggins. Now maybe, maybe, Wizards of the Coast wanted to take steps to ensure that their first limited supply secret layer super drop did not sell out in six hours like the Cats and Dogs Commander deck did, so they intentionally made nearly every secret layer here have very underwhelming value, to say the least. It's also worth noting that, despite secret layers changing from print to demand to limited supply products, these still will not ship until March, despite Wizards saying the whole reason they changed the system was so that secret layer orders could ship more quickly. Nonetheless, we must move forward. This video will look at the financial value of every secret layer in this current super drop, and as always, the grades will reflect that financial value. Remember, as always, that my commentary and my grades are just that my own. They reflect my own evaluations and opinions and are meant more to help you reach your own conclusions rather than just blindly agree with whatever I say. Disagree with my greater opinion? Great! Maybe in hearing my thoughts it helped you better form your own conclusions, even if those conclusions differed from my own. That's wonderful, that's the point. The grade that matters, after all, is yours. It's your money. So, with that being said, let's take a look and what Wizards of the Coast wants you to spend it on this time. But first, come on a journey with me for a moment and imagine if you will. It's your first Pro Tour and you made day two. We've all been there, right? You sit down across the table from your first opponent and oh my God, it's Brian Kibler. You're going to have to really focus to win this match, but you spent all of last night awake, tossing and turning. That's no good because a good night's sleep is critical to being at your best. But what if your mattress isn't helping you relax? Put your mattress back to work for you with today's sponsor, Helix Sleep. Helix Sleep offers fully customized premium mattresses that are shipped directly to your door. Helix Sleep makes it easy to build the mattress of your dreams with their innovative sleep quiz. Just answer a few simple questions about your body type and sleep preferences and Helix will match you with the perfect mattress for your needs. Even if you and your sleeping partner have different preferences, Helix literally has your back. My wife and I use the Helix Dusk Lux mattress and what's great is that each half of our mattress is engineered for our specific sleep needs. Helix mattresses come in one box that's super easy to unpack and set up and flexible payment plans and financing options mean your perfect night's sleep is always within reach. Like I said, I actually use a Helix mattress and I've been sleeping on it for, hold on. Oh my gosh, 700 nights at this point. Wow, that's true. I love my Helix mattress and I think you will too. Visit helixsleep.com slash Tolarian today to get 20% off of your Helix mattress plus two free pillows. Get a great night's sleep, or in my case, 700 great night's sleeps, and who knows what you could achieve. Thank you, Helix Sleep, for sponsoring this video. Let's begin with Deceptive Divination, an all black and white secret layer whose name is more portentous than intended. In that, reading the card does not explain the card when it comes to circular logic, a counterspell which has incorrectly been printed at sorcery speed. What's funny about this misprint is you could still technically use circular logic by paying its madness cost, though to do so would presume people still use circular logic, which they do not. 
It's a two cent card whose foil goes for a whopping 18 cents. And that's for versions whose rules text is correct. The other cards in this drop include Wall of Omens, a nine cent card, the ubiquitous Eternal Witness that, while a commander staple, is only a 50 cent card, leaving price of progress and scheming symmetry as the two cards of note at $2.50 and $4.76, respectively. Price of progress at least sees legacy play, but when you look at the total value of this secret layer being $7.93 for non-foil and $12.10 for foil, I don't know. This one just sucks, man. Flat sucks. And while I know it's subjective, I'm just gonna say it. This art might look really cool on a poster, but there's no way you can read this when you're actually seated at the table. Though I suppose that's a plus when the cards are not even printed correctly. Wizards of the Coast has confirmed that this misprint will indeed not be fixed by the time this ships out since it's already been printed. And so as way of apology, or as they put it, a token of their embarrassment, they're giving you a $5 discount on this secret layer, which still leaves it ridiculously overpriced given how little value is in its contents. Grade is a fail. In all capital letters, editor, don't just put an F, spell it out. F-A-I-L. Make it red. Wizards of the Coast should have been more than $5 embarrassed about this secret layer, even if there had been no misprints at all. Moving on to secret layers that have color in them, we have Just Add Milk, a secret layer with the cereal-themed fronts and backs, and like so many other secret layers, looks really cool as a poster, but leaves us with largely unreadable, illegible cards on the play field. There's a few good cards here, namely Sakashima of a Thousand Faces, who not only is the first time reprint from Commander Legends, but at least here allows us to get a foil version that isn't one of the notoriously bad Commander Legends Pringles, and Adrix and Nev Twin Casters, though they were just reprinted in the Markov Manor Commander Precons. So given the close proximity, I fear once again Wizards of the Coast's left hand is not talking to its right. Unfortunately, the remaining cards in the secret layer don't hold much value. Krark the Thumbless is only a 50 cent card, and Yargle is more of a meme card in that Yargle is a 4 cent card. And I wouldn't mind the meme inclusion of Yargle so much if this was a five card or more secret layer. But for some reason, it's only four cards, making that four cent Yargle all the more of a sting. You know Yargle isn't valuable when the cereal box activity asks you to cut up the card to make a Yargle paper doll. Total value for non-foil is $35.77, and total value for foil is $44.79. So basically, you can spend 30 bucks to get 35 bucks, or 40 bucks to get 45 bucks, I don't consider that particularly good value-wise, and so I'm going to say this is a flat D. Enjoy that cereal box art all you like, but financially speaking, I'd like to see five cards and at least four of them of value. All right, so right around here, I want to briefly talk about special art as it relates to secret layers and whether or not you should be looking at these drops as collectibles versus actual game pieces. In my mind, ideally, Magic the Gathering products should strive to do both, to be both. Whether they are a secret layer or a special treatment in a collector booster or whatever, creating collectibles is absolutely a valid strategy for a collectible card game. But in a collectible card game, the game part shouldn't be left out or ignored either. I've always said that art is subjective, and I stand by that if you love a work of art on a magic card, even a magic card that may not individually be worth too much on its own, there's absolutely nothing wrong with choosing to spend your money to buy and own that piece to collect it. But at the same time, there is a kind of wild effect that all of these secret layer styles are beginning to have, which is drop after drop of cards that, in a game of magic, players probably cannot easily read or understand, if they can read them at all. The designs on many of these secret layers, from the stripped down black and white minimalism of deceptive divination, to the overly colorful and active breakfast cereal box styles, both bring with them the simple fact that these are not designed to be easily readable, or even understandable in the case of some magic card designs. 
Heck, the cereal box designs don't even have their full rules text on the front. You have to attempt to read both sides if you want to read what the card does at all. And I really feel this is a legitimate concern from a gameplay perspective, as more and more difficult and even impossible to read secret layer designs are added into the game's ecosystem. Art may be subjective, but it is not unreasonable to expect that in games of Magic, where, especially in games of Commander, there can be dozens upon dozens of different cards in play on the battlefield at the same time, that these game pieces be reasonably legible, and at the very least, something that you can pick up and read. So please take my complaints and snarky comments about the art and design of these secret layers not to be disparaging against the art itself. I'm not making fun of or trying to disparage the quality of the art, the artwork, certainly not the artist, but rather to voice frustration over just how illegible, as game pieces, the vast majority of these cards have become. And remember, these styles are not a minimal occurrence anymore. There's more and more outlets for them, least of all the fact that last year alone we had the equivalent of more than, more than, one secret layer per week. So yes, many of these cards have artwork and designs that I absolutely love, but more as a poster on my wall than as an actual card amongst dozens that I need to read and parse during a game of Magic. That being said, let's continue to look at the rest of this super drop. Next, we have hard-boiled thrillers, and I'm going to stop complaining about how illegible these cards are in practice, because I don't know if people are even buying these to play with them in their decks, so much as collect them and put them in their folders. And yes, I know art is subjective, but I think I'm just getting sick of seeing a potpourri of different art styles that I can't read on the battlefield in front of me. But financially speaking, there's not a lot here that isn't in foil, meaning that Obeka, Brute Chronologist, is only worth 25 cents showing that even though she is technically a first-time reprint, she's not exactly one people were clamoring for. Jace, Wielder of Mysteries, has only been reprinted on the list, and as a secret layer bonus card, despite all that, is still worth less than $3. Black Market's only foil is from Mercadian Masks, so as you see in a moment, this $4.50 card is going to have a ridiculously high foil price. And Reconnaissance is a first reprint from Exodus, and happens to be a deceptively tricky card with a unique effect for your combat-focused commander deck. It's got a decent $10.99 non-foil value, and this secret layer here offers the first foil for your blinged-out Ishin deck. And finally, Dire Undercurrents is seeing a first-time reprint from all the way back in Shadow Moor Block, which would be really awesome if the card was played, well, anywhere. Total value in non-foil is $27.50, an absolute D, and the foil value is $133, plus the fact that Reconnaissance has never seen a foil printing, once again showing us that classic foil split I've talked about. I'll go ahead and offer that a C+, as I feel the overall value is largely inflated. Next up is our showcase for Markov's at Karlov Manor secret layer, bringing with us a variety of, oh no wait, there's only four of them? Again, only four? Oh dear. And considering we have Gaunty, Lord of Luxury among them, a 14 cent card, whose foils sell for 20 cents, and Grenzo, Dungeon Warden, a 30 cent card, whose foils fetch a hefty $2.50, we are left with the real cards of interest being Anowin, the Ruined Thief, seeing his first reprint from Zendikar Rising Commander, and Villas, Broker of Blood, the most valuable card in the drop because it's essentially a Commander Legal Grizzlebrand. Brand. Well, it's Commander Legal Grizzlebrand at home, and it has only been reprinted before in the Game Night box set, which is why it is the most valuable card in this drop at $7.43. Meaning that your $30 will get you $8 worth of cards in non-foil, and your $40 will get you $17 worth of cards in foil. And you may be thinking that this failure of a secret layer is pretty bad, but hey, at least the cards aren't filled with typos, right? 
Let's move along to the beauty of the beasts. One of the more legible secret layers of the Super Drop. A collection of borderless super art cards. This secret layer drop includes Peregrine Drake, a five cent card that is illegal to play in Popper. So where's it gonna go? Felidar Guardian, though an 81 cent card, at least has only had one foil printing, and so the foil version here has got a bit of heft to it, whereas Serpent of Yawning Depths has only ever been printed once and never in foil, so that at least is a decent include. But the remaining two cards, Scourge of Valkus and Voracious Hydra, aren't particularly big ticket items, though at least Voracious Hydra has only been printed in a 2020 core set prior to now. But all in all, it's another disappointing drop at $14 of value in non foil for your 30 bucks and $24 of foil value for your 40 bucks. People might have seen the title of this video and thought I was being hyperbolic. This really is the worst collection of secret layers, I think, ever? Well, so far, but it's a fail. If you like the art, if you want that playset of Felidar Guardians to bling out, go for it. But you're probably gonna have a better time buying singles or just buying other versions of these cards. Last but not quite least, because have you seen the other secret layer drops? Being least would be quite an achievement with this lineup. We have Prismatic Nightmares, another borderless super art collection with cards like Nightscape Familiar, a 15 cent card. Hooray for the very, very rare popper deck that maybe runs one copy of this card, but overall I don't think it's got a lot of homes. Reign of Filth was printed in Urza's Saga only and never in foil, so it's got a decent $5 price tag on it, and I'd say that if you're going to get a first time foil printing via Secret Lair, getting one as a borderless super art is pretty good, and this is also the first time reprint for Prince of Thralls, which would be great if it wasn't a card that's present in only 1% of decks on EDH Rec. So don't expect its foil version to hold that $30 value. The drop also features cards like Simeon Spirit Guide and Arcane Denial, which are 98 cents and $2.67 respectively, and altogether bring the value of this drop to $14.45 in non-foil, a fail, and $49.31 in foil, due to the fact that Prince of Thralls is $30. Is that a C? I just feel it's artificial, and I've talked about this before. I don't know, seems harsh to give a $50 foil secret layer a D, so how about a C minus minus? It's the professorly equivalent of saying to a student, I know you cheated, but I don't want to spend the effort to prove it. Take your barely passing mark and get out of here. Come back when you remember how to make secret layer drops worth more than 14 bucks and that counter spells need to be instants in order to work. You know, I'll be honest, I do feel bummed out. Last year I made multiple videos praising secret layers, saying that my biggest issue was more one of volume rather than quality. A quality I felt simply needed to be increased in terms of the value of some, but not all, of the drops. And I still stand by that, even though I understand why a lot of people say that the ideal secret layer drop should be low value cards offered in cool special treatments. I actually think that's a very valid argument, but there's a difference between a soul ring being offered in a rare and special treatment, or say the talismans or the Ravnica signets being offered in a rare or special treatment versus cards like circular logic or slip on the ring. You can't just lean on special art to be the only selling point. If you're going to aim to offer secret layers with low value cards, then you need to ensure that said low value cards are still ones that have an incredible use and utility in people's decks to justify why they might spend $40 on $10 worth of cards. And there's also something to be said for the extremely limited equity of cards that meet that criteria which are out there, but that perhaps is another discussion. And now I want to hear from you. What did you think of this secret layer super drop? Do you agree with me about the overall disappointing value in pretty much all of the drops? Or do you think I'm being overly critical? Do you think some of these drops are a great value? Which ones and why? Let me know in the comments below. 
Hey, thanks again to Helix Sleep for sponsoring this video. You know, a good night's sleep is critical to everything that you want to do during the day. And if your mattress is no good, your sleep is probably no good. So check out Helix Sleep. I really sleep on one and I love it. Right now, if you visit helixsleep.com forward slash Tolarian, you'll get 20% off of your Helix mattress plus two free pillows. Get a great night's sleep with Helix Sleep. Thanks again for sponsoring this video. Next time on Shuffle Up and Play. Unknown Commander. Gavin, I don't know what this is. This is your event. So I design about 60 or so playtest cards for each one of these people have never seen before. What makes a card a playtest card? They look like this. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Rachel Weeks. I'm playing the Colossal Dreadmaw. Hi, my name is George. I am going to be playing Polis the Plane Shifter. I want to have the honor of playing the first playtest card of the game. Right. Wow, Ooh. so fast. Command power plants. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Ross gonna love this one. Oh no. So George, 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 okay. look at my thing and I wanna attack you. I'm not scared of the Roman. Oh, you Why should, not? No, you, you should, should be. be. Okay. I choose a plane at random. All right. There is Immerstorm. Yeah! <laughs> you have seven floating green mana from yeah. that? And you know what I'm gonna do with it, bro? I'm gonna cast a Colossal cast Dreadmore. A foundation oh. Breaker. Wow. I mean. A colossal <laughs> dragon! <laughs> I'll say that there's not a lot of balance and rigor put in these unknown playtest guys. Okay, there's no tutors.